God's peace be with you. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, Jesus tells us the parable of the dishonest steward. This parable is intriguing because Jesus positively commends a dishonest steward. The steward, entrusted with his master's property, had been adding exorbitant amounts for himself to what debtors owed his master. To one, he had doubled the actual amount and charged 100 measures of olive oil. To another, who was charged for 100 cores of wheat, he had overcharged by 25%. The master was still getting what was due to him, but the steward was unjustly profiting by overcharging his master's debtors. In the end, the master commends the dishonest steward. What? For being dishonest? What is this all about? What is the lesson for us? This parable is actually about us as well. We are stewards according to God's call. We have been entrusted with His divine work on earth and with resources with which to accomplish that work. In doing so, God has entrusted us with the necessary gifts and empowerment to do the work. How have we performed as stewards? Perhaps we would say, yes, I'm doing God's work. But here is the important question. In doing God's work, do we also put in our own personal interest and advantage? All the glory should belong to God, but do we also look for a bit of glory ourselves, as well as power, position, and prestige? Those we evangelize and bring back to God are to be brought back to the church. But do we insist on bringing them into our own private groups as well to increase our numbers? In so doing, we could end up negatively affecting the very work of God. When we look to power and position rather than just humbly serving without reference to self, do we then force God to thwart our efforts so as to humble us? When we insist on bringing those who evangelize into our own groups rather than just being brought back to God and to the church, do we limit the larger work that God wants to do in and through us? God is about a mighty work, and He has decided to use us as His human instruments. But our self-referential add-ons can negate the power and effectiveness that He intends. So are we God's stewards then, as it says in verse 1, squandering His property? Do we need to be summoned by God and told, What is this? I hear about you. Prepare a full account of your stewardship because you can no longer be my steward. Before that happens, let us examine ourselves. Are we totally dedicated to God's work? Do we use all the gifts and resources He has given us for this work? Are we looking only to His interests and not in any way to our own? We inevitably will find that we have not been totally proper stewards. We may even have been dishonest, appropriating for ourselves the recognition, honor, and benefits that should have been for God alone. If so, we must then ask, as the dishonest steward did, what shall I do? We must review our actions, postures, and priorities and determine to purge these of what is just for personal benefit. What should be left are only those aspects that truly promote the kingdom of God, advance the work of evangelization, and give honor and glory to God alone. Then we will be worthy of our Lord's approval. As we read in verse 8, And the master commended the dishonest steward for acting prudently. God bless you.